So good morning, everyone, and um, good morning uh, to the representatives of the state and the representatives of civil society and all members of the commission, my brothers and my brothers and sister commissioner, and uh, members of the secretariat and the executive secretary. Um, this is the fifth hearing of our 187th period of sessions, um, 2023. And I, I'm happy to see all of you here present um, so that we can have a fulsome hearing on this matter. The hearing number five is to do with human rights and the use of facial recognition technologies in Brazil. And it was requested by UN Afro Brazil. And I'm afraid I cannot um, swear to pronounce in the other one. It looks like United Nucleus of Educate, Popular Education for Black People. And Classe Traba uh, da Dora. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize for my bad pronunciation. I have no confidence in Portuguese. My name is Margaret May McCauley. Um, I'm the president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And with me on the panel to, today, this panel, uh, and the Rapporteur of Brazil, my sister commissioner, Julissa Mantilla, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal and Commissioner Strado Rallon. Firstly, um, oh, and in addition, here also present uh, for the commission is the Executive Secretary, Tanya Renault, the Deputy Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Polido, and special, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. We'll start with a uh, um, deep and warm greetings from the commission to the state and to civil society here present and all those who are witnessing this hearing online. I would, I need to explain the distribution of time so we can all keep our eye on the clock and keep within the times allotted to us. Civil society is, uh, has 20 minutes. The state has 20 minutes. The Inter-American uh, um, um, Commission's panel has 20 minutes. And then uh, following that, we will have comments in reply from civil society for 12 minutes. And following that, comments from the state for 12 minutes. And then the closing session by the commission for six minutes. Um, civil society will have the floor. If I can just, for those online, mention the fact that the applicant civil society organizations propose to discuss the impact of facial recognition technologies on the human rights of the Afro-descendant population in Brazil, presenting data on artificial intelligence, AI bias, and racial discrimination. The applicants will highlight the unequal affectation which the deployment of facial recognition in public security has on the rights of uh, this group of people. With that, so I hand the floor to civil society. Civil society, you may start. Hello? Olá, boa tarde. Hello, good afternoon. I am Lameda. I am representing Uni Afro Brasil, which is a movement organized in different uh, action nuclei in the periphery of Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. We 
work in different activities dealing with adults and teenagers, public schools, in particular, black people. We fight against biases and we fight against racism. We have a society which was built structurally racist. 90% of the incarcerated person has to do with color. There are persons that study and analyze this all the time. We are talking about the creation of a data bank with racist intelligence, a data bank that is not neutral. So it has a background of negative information and makes analysis of phases. And these are not black people because we have a security and justice system that is mainly white. That is main criticism against public safe security. This works as a system that use uh, software and algorithm to map the patterns of the faces of these people and has been used to detain uh, thousands of Brazilians that are innocent, more, mainly black people. That technology is produced in the global north. So the pattern, the profile of the people is not uh, black people. So these leads to the incarceration of black population, poor people, innocent people. And that has to do with evidence that impacts negatively people. So once again, we are facing technology or steel and mechanisms that produce historic racism in our society. This is in a very high level. It can be seen in state policies, black bodies are not desired and there's a um, racist structure in our country we can identify an event that has implemented data banks uh, related to biometric data dna and facial recognition has already been implemented. Our different uh, organizations such as ours have been fighting this decision. We are daily facing racism, and now we have institutional support from the Commission so that the lawmakers can protect the dignity of the incarcerated population in Brazil. Corta Martinez, for example, is a case I heard by the board that had to do with police lethality and the need for a public policy to reduce the lethality of the state. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Tarcisio Silva. I am a researcher in the Academy and the Civil Society. I work for the PC and from the Museo. I would like to use this time to um, discuss mass surveillance. Uh, researchers uh, from different countries in the continent identify the origin of uh, mass surveillance. The role of the Cartel de Trabalho during the dictatorship and different surveillance devices have been used to punish the Black population. We have a long history of the use of that vulnerable uh, individual that has been identified as a suspect. Surveillance. has to do with different ways of uh, different ways of making people uh, steal 
feel like slaves through uh, constant surveillance, and that persists even today. Today, there are differentiated manifestations that have to do with the identification documents in that context of surveillance that include different laws to punish black and poor people in the public spaces. So biometric mass surveillance has a terrible history in applications related to technology and they uh, analyze different behaviors based on the biometric data. They are developing then uh, scientific racist uh, theories. They have tried to define who is uh, dangerous based on race. The providers of technologies have uh, used this technology trying to apply not only facial recognition to identify psychological sexual characteristics of people that trend can be identified in brazil in the implementation of facial recognition that has included different features such as gait or uh, other facial uh, features that people may have. There's then a support of uh, state violence that has to do with biometric violence that maintain state violence and lead to the uh, murder of black uh, poor uh, people. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I am Raquel da Cruz Lima. I am coordinating Atigo de Sinovi, which is an organa organization based on Article 19 of the Declaration of Human Rights. I will deal with how biometric technology, especially facial recognition, has been discussed by different human rights organizations. I would like to say that the state and the private sector have implemented biometric technology, such as facial recognition, without considering the damage they may cause to different people and their human rights. As any technology available, it is usually applied automatically without taking into account the damage. This technology has a serious effect on human rights. It leads to biases and there is different interpretation regarding uh, human rights and biometric technology. Human rights organizations recognize the ways in which new ways of data processing with an impact on human rights, in particular, right to privacy. In the report 2021 of the High Commissioner of the UN re regarding uh, privacy and technology, states that collecting and biometric data affects the right to privacy. And the report states that has to do with the surveillance developed by the state, which is watching, surveilling the uh, population. And this leads to uh, an interference, uh, an effect on their rights. This also affects other rights. And it has to do with uh, freedom of expression and right uh, of assembly, which are basic in a democratic system. These are uh, rights that are reinforced mutually for everyone who wants to speak in public spaces. This is a fundamental right that is affected by surveillance. Thus, the uh, special rapporteur of the UN 
in 2019 discussed a global uh, moratory for the use of surveillance technology, including uh, facial recognition. The report stated that this kind of tool may interfere in human rights, such as uh, right to privacy, um, religious belief, uh, rights to privacy, um, liberty of expression, and it is necessary to have uh, efficient policies in connection with this kind of technology. The special r rapporteur of the UN has declared that the use of indiscriminate technology should be prohibited when it affects a free and peaceful assembly. This violation to privacy and freedom of expression regarding uh, facial recognition has been recently recognized by the European Court on Human Rights. And this was heard in July 2023. In that case, the court concluded that there was um, a violation of the rights of the uh, petitioner in the use of facial recognition as data such as photographs and videos uh, published in um, Telegram to uh, capture this person um, have violated his rights. In the general recommendation 36, the UN has identified that the uh, increase of uh, state violence through the use of technology such as facial recognition depends uh, racial discrimination, recrimination, and xenophobia, and the interpretation of the norms that shows that the Commission should also um, guarantee these policies are implemented and rights are uh, respected. Good morning. I am lawyer. I'm going to start this talk to talk talking about Brazil and the uh, black bodies are standard as dangerous uh, and the people living in the streets, trans people, and the uh, facial recognition. This is a country where the criminal selectivity is notorious against poor people. And there are research by certain bodies that show that 90% of people uh, shown by facial recognition are uh, black people. And in the states where there are more people, more black people in Brazil, I'm sorry, but the audio is quite difficult to understand. In the context of Sao Paulo, a tender proceeding was open to construct a service of monitoring of the structure for the treatment of the images that have been captured. I would like to underscore that the bill, the project provides for the installation of several cameras all around Sao Paulo. And the places where the cameras will be installed will be chosen by the company that wins a tender proceeding. The cameras will track the suspect people 
and monitor all their movements and activities. There are different types of characteristics that are going to be tracked, uh, or tracked such as the body aspect and the features of the face. And the when they uh, their behavior will be considered as a suspect whenever they spend much time in a place thank you for listening to me i am Julia Faustina Vad, I am representing the laboratory and to go on with what Arthur was saying, it's important to think that this is an, an alert not only for the only, the, the biased use of technology, but also the number of public uh, security incidents, which ha have already been mentioned. 84.1% of the death by policial officers are of black people, and 60% of the population, incarcerated population, are black people. We know that in from 2005 to today, the black population increased 10 percent the ones that are incarcerated so the violence against black people is increasing and the projects and the use of facial recognitions are brought as a response as a security policy these data are not taken into account and all the problems that were already quoted by our colleagues there was a study by the panoptic the code rights in the goya state where they used almost three thirty million reels to apply surveillance cameras with facial recognition in approximately 144 municipalities of Guayas. These projects included munici municipalities where the, the people did not even have access to water and the violence uh, rates were really high. So the things that should have used, the resources that should have been used in public policy are being used in vigilance, in surveillance. And for enriching some of the companies that are linked to uh, very important local politicians. It is also important to underscore the campaign which brought the need not only of a dialogue with the civil society, but also with the executive where we carried out a parallel campaign called Sayada Miyakara, where more than 50 laws were uh, established a protocol that asked for facial recognition or connection drops. So what we would like to request is that these are not going to solve structural problems and it's important for facial recognition not to be used in the benefit of political interest and that public policy should be carrying out that protect the black population and LGBTQ population that are the ones that are suffering. So, we as the civil society out of time um, you will have to continue with what else you have to say in your reply section. Um, I 
I now invite the states to make their comments. Muito obrigado, senhora comissária. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Bom dia a todos e a todas. Good morning. The state of Brazil thanks the civil society organization and the ICHR for calling this hearing that allows us to treat this topic, which is so very important. The delegation of the Brazilian state is represented by the Ministry of Justice and Public Security, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Racial Equality, and the General Advocacy of the Union. Before giving the floor to the representatives of the bodies I've mentioned, I would like to say that the topic um, we are discussing here today is still under discussion in the uh, Brazilian state. This topic includes the 26 states and the federal state, which has uh, their own competence in the area of public security, therefore the possibility to use different systems of facial recognition that can be considered. Taking into consideration the federal nature of Brazil, we are going to give the visions of the agencies, of the different agencies of the national government and how they are treating this topic. The Brazilian uh, government ratified its com commitments in the area of human rights. I will now give the floor to the representative of the Ministry of Justice and from the Federal Police. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Elias Sanjiki Hamo. I hope you can hear me. We're going to start. We are facing two important realities that have to be uh, debated. On one side, we are talking about the processes and proceedings. On the other side, we are talking about the defense of uh, liberties and the prevention of future crimes. Those two realities have to be com made compatible for the correct analysis, the application and the efficiency of the um, rights to defense. And it's important for everyone to know all the process, the rules related to the use of the system of facial recognition. It's important to understand those systems, how the algorithm works, the limits of the technical documents and their limitations within the scope of the investigation. We're going to talk about the experience of the federal police, and we are going to focus on the um care in its use. This is not a mass vigilance system. It's a system to combat the uh, crimes that have against crimes that have already occurred. And it is also used in situations of uh, human trafficking and uh, children pornography, etc. I believe it's very important for us to understand that we have the software and the algorithm that brings a list of people based on facial morphology. In our systems, we don't use any filter whatsoever of gender or race for the analysis to be carried out. Out of that initial list, there is a analysis and objective analysis taking into consideration uh, facial morphology and we need to explain why that each coincidence or divergence we see is there in the algorithm in order to um, withdraw the bias there is also a blind review by pairs by people 
those people without knowing anything about the crime tried to identify those people so then a technical document is created where it says that it's the result has to be supported by other expert uh, proof and evidence so whenever we work in the subjective arena we start to perceive uh raci racism and social profiling but in our work it's a very objective analysis and it is used in cases such as human trafficking or uh child, child promote pornography as i already said so we try to reduce impunity in this way. So we observe that facial treatment has several tiers and each of them has to be analyzed separately. Once we understand this, this the debate makes sense and we need to identify the problem that needs to be combat that needs to be uh, struggled upon so we should stop to demonize everything and we need to improve and enhance the processes and proceedings as the final analysis i think that we should avoid any type of racist algorithm and we need to follow the procedures in an objective way and we need to make people aware and to make them know about the limits of the work facial recognition as to interpol cannot be used as a, an evidence as a piece of evidence on its own and it can never be used to corroborate a prison without other means of proof means of evidence we work with a team without identifying the author or the victim. We never work on the basis of a subjective analysis. We need that we must hold these kinds of debates. Sometimes we need to, uh, to understand all the technical aspects and we need to make all the faces understood because this is the first step towards uh, protecting the rights and the warranties i am at your disposal at the civil society disposal and at, at the ischr disposal so as to debate further on this topic there are some important aspects that i could not talk about um because of time for instance there are some points that uh, su such as the reduction to zero of the facial algorithm thank you very much and with these i'm going to end my presentation now the representative of the ministry of racial equality i would like to greet all of you Madam Margaret Moccoli um, from the Commission, and I am going to affirm and to assert that the facial recognition technologies in, the, in their use towards vigilance have raised several discussions in Brazil and in the world, especially in the cases of racial algorithm this discriminations those technologies allow for the face of a person to be digitalized and associated automatically to a database as it was published by the university of brazilia in 2020 and other research facial recognition has broadly been used we need to underscore its use for 
uh, cell phones and for to locate people who had run off the justice system. This has been done through cameras in public and private spaces and in means of transport which are connected to the judicial authorities. This has been subject to several discussions around the world due to the violation of privacy and other fundamental rights and the multiplication of cases of algorithm, racial algorithm cases, and the discrimination of black people and the mass incarceration. These cameras are connected to devices that have very big databases and this allows them to locate people without them being uh, aware that they are being scrutinized in the US, for instance, in Berkeley, San Francisco and California and in Massachusetts, they uh, banned the use of images collected by uh, facial recognition devices, as this was published in uh, newspapers such as BBC. These algorithms may be codes that must be followed to solve a problem or to um, attain a specific objective. This is what happens in the virtual world. These codes are establish all the pay the steps for the working of the softwares and the equipment of cell phones. These algorithms are essential not only for uh, the development of security systems, but also for um, digital technologies. And there are biased that we call discrimination or algorithm racism. Racism. This racism occurs when there is distinction in the approach of digital content assumed by algorithms. And these leads on how these codes were elaborated. These kind of discrimination has been attached to facial recognition and they look through computer mechanisms the construction of machines that can carry out tasks and that they require uh, human intelligence so these programs can be improved automatic automatically depending on the number of uh, data processed the ways the most frequent ways of algorithm discrimination are racism and sexism and there is research that tells that this is because most of the technology is created by white, white men. So the uh, importance criteria with which the algorithms are produced assumes um, sexist and um, racist uh, assumptions so take these assumptions. 90% of the people in Brazil has as a target a black population in 2019 in Rio de Janeiro, 95 devices for monitoring and vigilance have been implemented. In Rio de Janeiro, there was a request for uh, reviewing the data and five there were five orders to imprisonment and at the same year 11 detentions in maracana were uh, 
carried out for the use of the technology. Only four of the people detained had effectively had an order upon them with they admitted that among the 11 people there was an error of the system in 63 percent of the cases the false feeling of security leads to is uh, sparked because of the high inefficiency of those devices 903 alerts were created and some of them did not have any funding and there was a four percent of uh, alerts uh, that were issued these the treatment of data was uh, stopped being re regulated and there is a growth of projects of facial recognition by the police. Sorry, Yuri, you need to conclude your presentation because we have one more. I would like to conclude saying that the ministry understand that several practical measures can be used, such as uh, establishing national guidelines apart from independent audits and the participation of civil society in the use of those technologies. Thank you. We will now give the floor to the representative of uh, the Ministry of Human Rights. I am Bruna Costa. I coordinate uh, public security in the ministry. I would like to thank you for the opportunity of participating in this public hearing. And I will not discuss what the ministry has already mentioned. Brazil has a structural racism and technology. They cannot be used to uh, maintain violence of against these historically um, violated groups. So I would like to say that Brazil is a federative republic. We have states and municipalities, and we understand that the representation of the federal policy, but well, there is also state police, and it's very important to discuss what kind of uh, facial recognition will be used by the state. There have been at least five uh, states evil uh, developing these projects i'm going to move forward saying that we have legislation for the protection of data and this technology cannot uh, hinder um human integrity human dignity we should be cautious regarding the creation of databases through uh, facial recognition, especially when it has to do with gender and race. Access to this data, protection of privacy, access to this data, this is something that has to be established. And the exclusion of the, that data has to be determined. The policy cannot uh, violate people's rights, such as uh, presumption of innocence. There was a resolution in 2020 establishing that the principles for the use of in e artificial intelligence by the judiciary, but this does not state anything regarding human rights violations. There's a great concern regarding communalization of uh, persons uh, that are part of uh, social movements uh, that uh, enjoy their right of association, of assembly, and all the persons who live in the streets that uh, are also exposed to these uh, profiling. Public policies will be developed, take into account what has been discussed here in this hearing, take into account the need of social participation throughout this process. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have 
more time and I would like to highlight that this is something that is being discussed by the state and we are here representing federal bodies in particular. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, to the state, uh, the Lostra State of Brazil, for their presentation. And I, I hoped I thanked civil society for theirs. I think I did. Um, it is now the Inter-American Commission's panel's uh, time to intervene. And so I therefore invite my sister commissioner, Ulisa Mandia. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to cordially greet the organizations here represented, and I appreciate the presence of the Brazilian state as well. I think that this discussion occurs at two levels. On the one hand, what Mr. Santos is saying about the algorithms and the meaning of technology, and I'm sure uh, my colleague uh, the commissioner, well, but he's not a commissioner, though the president calls him commissioner, but Mr. Pedro Baca will allow us to have more information. But I see two points here. On the one hand, both parties acknowledge the existence of structural racism. So what are the, are the prevention policies based on technology? So what is the state doing to monitor this? Because both parties have recognized there is racism. So what are they, what is the state doing to monitor how these data are used? Which cases of racism has it identified? How will it correct them? How is the state training those in charge of uh, drafting and interpreting the data? And there's something that's very important here. Uh, the bias, because we're all biased in terms of gender, of race, stereotypes. As I, I was, I read, I read uh, quite recently that artificial intelligence is human because it's also linked to racism and discrimination. And finally, I would like to do a little exercise. It doesn't have to be done now, but just Google, uh, just for, for those who are watching it now, just open Google and search Happy families, and tell me how many Afro families you see there on the results. I read it somewhere, I looked it up, and you can do it right now if you're looking at this hearing. Google happy families, and on the first search, you won't see a single Afro family. As if happy families are only white, so we are aware of the problem. The civil society is doing great work. So I would like to hear that from the state. How is it measuring bias? How is it monitoring it? What prevention policies uh, will it implement? Because there's already a study on artificial intelligence and databases in New York, because statistically uh, it would uh, find more responsible persons as black people persons. So we need to see how we monitor and sanction this. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, my sister Julissa. Um, I now invite uh, Commissioner Carlos Bernal. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to Thank you for the invitation to take part in this interesting hearing about a topic that is very current. And my comments will have to do with what Commissioner Mantilla said. First of all, uh, facial recognition technology isn't something that only appears in Brazil or isn't a violation of human rights onto itself. But of course, it does lead to, lead to some problems in terms of intimacy and uh, equality or privacy more than intimacy. And that's the object of this hearing. If we look at the literature on human rights and constitutional law and uh, in artificial intelligence, one of the main points with regards to the threats is algorithm discrimination, the um, how 
discrimination is exacerbated when using into uh, artificial intelligence but the question here is well first of all some facial uh, recognition technologies could exist like this is the case in china europe in the us in particular china and europe which have more regulations in terms of artificial intelligence this is one of the issues on the table for regulation because discrimination is forbidden it's banned uh, algorithm discrimination it is forbidden to do to do a um, discriminatory use of ai the thing is what is done with that information and what is done to prevent that algorithm discrimination so my questions for the state are number one is there in brazil some sort of regulation about ai and the use of ai and second does that regulation cover some aspect that attends at preventing algorithm discrimination and thirdly if that's the case how is that implemented for example, with mechanisms as the ones uh, mentioned by Commissioner Mantilla, educational campaigns, prevention campaigns, so that the members of the um, public forces and the justice system do not use intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence to perpetuate discrimination that already exists outside of AI. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I don't speak Portuguese. I can uh, understand it and read it, but I'm not fluid. So I prefer to speak in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you, uh, my brother, uh, Commissioner Bernal. I now invite Commissioner, my brother, Commissioner Estrada Rallon, whose hand does not need to be on. I was searching for you on the panel. Um, so please, um, could you make your intervention now? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet my colleagues and the civil society organizations and the state. I have a couple of questions for the state along the lines of what my colleagues said. When the state was presenting, it mentioned a challenge, I'm sorry, a challenge in improving the protocols and a challenge in improving audits. The audit that is necessary. I believe this was addressed to achieve a balance because if these protocols are improved, if that monitoring exists, then human rights can be respected and the perks of, the, of these technologies can be used to prevent crime and to protect citizens. So my question specifically is if there's some sort of roadmap for these protocols or these uh, uh, measures of monitoring. Thank you. Um, thank you, my brother, Valon. I now um, our special rapporteur, um, Pedro Vaca, um, whether he might, wishes to intervene, and if so, please do so. Muchas gracias, Presidenta. Eh, Thank saludo. you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet the Commission, the uh, civil society that has presented such an important debate, and the state's representatives. First of all, I'd like to say that human the human rights that are being discussed here pre-exist these technologies. So I would like to share a reflection about the development and the use of these uh, technologies and 
whether they uh, were they considered human rights when they were being developed. And I think that that's a question we are seeing in this hearing. Does this do these technologies take into account human rights standards? Because that generates a sort of debt. Um, there's there's talk about a debate within the Brazilian state, and I appreciate that. So what can be done? Because we can, this debate can last forever at the cost of human rights, in particular, the human rights of Afro-descendants, uh, because they can continue to be uh, undermined. Technology and human rights, that's a challenge for uh, the private sector, which are the main providers of technological tools, but it's more accentuated if we talk about the public sector. So what are the measures state entities, federal or state entities are implementing to uh, when using facial recognition tools? So what are the human rights safeguards to protect the uh, right to privacy and non-discrimination and freedom of expression. And that leads to an even bigger ch challenge. What are and what will be the impacts of the social parametrization that's already going on where, so, where facial recognition is just one of several ingredients because the state doesn't just have cameras, it also has fiscal information. Uh, some states even follow what people say on social media. Uh, the state monitors uh, protests. So um, this information can lead to uh, social parametrization. And what will be the use of that information? And will that use be only limited to security issues? And I would like to wonder if that use, uh, if, if it's... If, if the state only wishes to use this to for security, I would like to ask the state, and this is something that generates a lot of interest in the commission and in my rapporteurship, we would like to know the origin of these codes, these programming codes, because there's a technology uh, developed in democratic states, and then there are uh, certain systems that are developed by non-democratic space uh, sp states. So, and there's a difference there. So, it would be interesting to know the initial origin of those technologies and who is in charge of the upkeeping of those uh, technologies. Uh, so, maybe what's going on in Brazil might be feeding databases around the globe. So that would uh, mean that there would be a loss of the sovereignty of the information. And in some circuits, people are starting to talk about ethics in uh, coding. Actually, in the Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles, the states of the OAS talked about ethics in coding, in programming. So I would like to ask the state whether the uh, facial technology, uh, recognition technologies it's using follow uh, standards of ethic, co ethic coding, ethical coding, and if not, how are they going to implement them in the future? And secondly, is the origin of that programming as diverse as the society of Brazil? We need programmers, coders who are as diverse as our societies. I think I'm running out of time, so I won't be able to share some elements, but I would like to say that they um, this could inhibit social protest in a continent that's going out to the streets and protest. And this was mentioned. Uh, and finally, we need to see how to regain our trust in the fact that states are not using this technology in a way that doesn't hurt human rights. And I think that uh, something key here is accountability. So those who have information, who has information to this information and what are the limits? And also what are the elements for accountability? Uh, even in the base, best case scenario, if there's no racialization, there's no racial use of uh, these technologies. If someone needed to file a claim for undue use, where can they go to? And how would the state remediate this situation? 
to uh, make sure that there's not a racist use of facial recognition. Thank, uh, recognition. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, also, the, our st current strategic plan includes a component of technology and human rights. So I think this is a conversation we will be following up on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression. And I, I was trying to indicate to you that you do have more time if you wanted more time to say something very important. Do you? Because we have five minutes left. Si, si es posible, si, eh, if possible, eh, yes, uh, I'd like to take that time. I would like to mention something on uh, public spaces guarantees, because uh, the use of biometric data in protests, for example, can be something that can um, harm the uh, confidence of uh, citizenship in their exercise of the right to demonstration. So I think this is, has to do with what Commissioner Bernal mentioned in terms of regulation. What are going to be the, the safeguards so that the use of facial recognition technologies in context of social protests do not end up becoming a tool to uh, intimidate people by the state so that it it can harm the rights of, of association and a peaceful demonstration. I think this is particularly relevant in our continent because the conditions of, of confidence for, for citizenship can be uh, harmed are being harmed lately and something else that has to do with some debates to the interior of the commission is the use of mass surveillance for example we have requested the um suspension of the use of some technology such as pegasus and this is not being uh, received. There are no responses by the state. So it's important for my rapporteurship to ask the state, what is the time period, the time margin for the use of these technologies? I think that is an important element. And also what are the regulatory guidelines that could be applied so that the technology is not used with the purpose of discrimination and also to safeguard the, the freedom of expression. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so very much, uh, um, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression. I, 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 I was enthralled by your, your questions and so on. Um, I, I look on this matter basically as a common law from the common law jurisdiction and not the civil law jurisdiction, um, which you all live with. I live in the common law. And I, I have the basic thing, and you, I adopt all your questions, Pedro, and your comments, uh, um, my sister commissioner, Julissa, and my brothers, uh, Carlos and, and Strado. Um, but I just want one basic thing to say, one basic thing from my position. I am extremely concerned that in fact, with the diversity within the black populations of any country that we cannot have any guarantees from any state that our, our fundamental human rights are not being violated. And in fact, there have been lots of debates on the fact that the basic data was formulated from white people and not black people. So, and I've never heard any state give information as to the, what is the basic form used. Have you informed any person when their likeness have been taken in by your, uh, your, your cameras and, and used machine? I've never heard it done. So that, these are the things I think a state has to assure the citizens about. And I really would love to hear how they intend to do that. Because if you take my picture, you have to tell me because it's a violation of a fundamental human right since you haven't got my permission to do so. So um, that's all I have to say now. And I now invite civil society to make their reply. You have 12 minutes.
Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, please go on. Boa tarde, meu nome é Luan Cruz, eu sou especialista do Good Inec. afternoon. I am a specialist for the center uh, that guarantees the rights of Brazilian consumptions. We have been uh, starting a series of actions regarding the use of technology in Brazil. Thank you for the comments made by the state. I would like to point out certain statements mentioned by the uh, state. For example, the participation of the federal government, and that has no connection with the municipalities and the state by the Ministry of Justice finances municipalities and states in Brazil. So through the Ministry of Justice and the budget it has, uh, that has allowed the purchase of this technology within the different states. So there should be a commitment not to finance these kind of technologies, take into account all the problems that have been mentioned in this session. Another point that I believe it is very important, take into account what the state has mentioned. This is quite shameful. It, this is a point that shows that facial recognition already happens in Brazil, in Latin America. Um, people, black people are being targeted in Brazil, in the different states, people suffering from police violence that has been promoted by facial recognition. We want a system that is 100% in a practical debate that is not practical. And there's a great problem regarding the use of biometric technologies and recognition. People are targeted in, and there is no camera that and there are cameras that are able to identify each person that moves around the city and that violates their people's rights to privacy. And the ban of the use of facial recognition technologies has been requested as it is not possible to mitigate all the problems caused by these kind of technology. This debate is being made in Europe, the European Union has to have requested the, U, the ban of this kind of technology. In Buenos Aires, it was discovered that um, the police use this technology to persecute uh, politicians, activists. And I believe that then we have clear evidence that this kind of technology shouldn't be used in our public policies as this violates the uh, human rights of the people in Brazil. Thank you. Hello. I am Pedro. I am from the EPIC, which is a, a independent center for research regarding uh, the use of technology and governance. I wanted to share the case of facial uh, representation system in Bahia. This is a system that works through uh, video monitoring networks that allows capturing uh, people. And in that regard, it shows how that these databases are defined by racism. The technology that uses that database will reproduce those uh, activities, those uh, files. And also, this is affected by the biases in the algorithms. This has been identified by different researchers all over the world. And in that 
rain what occurs in the state of Bahia is that there was a um, lack of transparency in this process. There was no prior consultation with the civil society and the system was implemented right away. It was announced in 2018 uh, and it was implemented within six months. This uh, is something that needs to be highlighted, the lack of transparency. When we analyze data from prisons between December 2018 and the uh, in June next year, there have been many people captured, and in many cases, we see the lack of transparency as we don't know why these people have been captured. There is also Racism within the judiciary, 40% have to do with um, burglary and robbery, and 24% shows the reaffirmation of the paradigm regarding drug possession. This is a war that always fails when it comes to combating dog trafficking, but it is successful when in, it comes to uh, undeclared uh, goals which are related to uh, capturing and sending black people to jail. These two affirms racist patterns within the penitentiary system in Brazil, so there's a need to ban this technology. Good afternoon to everyone present. I am Lucas Santos. I am a lawyer representing Red de Liberdade, and I would like to highlight, take into account what the state has mentioned, that there is um, a goal that has not been declared, that has to do with uh, misusing technology and data. Data uh, is being analyzed by peers, that is what they have said, but there's a danger behind the um, idea that this is not dangerous at all. If we understand the structural nature of racism, we know that there has no serious review. It has to do with understanding that um, the algorithms that are being developed will have racist biases that are conscious and are conscious. Secondly, because that those technical characteristics related to how these algorithms are developed in terms of facial recognitions. This has led to several organizations, national organizations, such as the European Commission, and they have declared the danger of using this technology. That technical aspect is useful to show that there is an idea of uh, impartiality that is all, always attributed to technology in general, and that is worrisome in particular when there are public officials involved, such as the police, the police and we know that um, certain testimonies by the police have been used against black women and men. So in the case of the use of technology, the risk uh, deepens when it comes to punishing um, these persons as there is an alleged um, impartiality when it comes to the use of technology, taking take into account what the representative of the state has said. So these 
affects universal warranties that are not a part of only of the Brazilian state, but are universal warranties that are guaranteed by international human rights documents that are related in particular to the presumption of innocence, which is denied to the black and poor population of Brazil. One, one minute and, and say 35 seconds left. Okay, thank you. In order to wrap up, I would like to say that we need to talk, to say what is obvious sometimes. And the, in this case, what is obvious here is that this technology is not neutral. And from this lack of neutrality, those bias arise. This technology will never be 100% accurate because the concept of data always used for this technology sub-represent a minority. And people are victims of false positive and false negative uh, errors. And this was uh, what shows some of the research that, but, that were done the National Institute of Standards and Technology from the government of the US that recognizes that black women are particularly affected by this technology and the, the Brazilian government should ban this technology, which is used in for public sector security and they should pay attention to all the problems that they're causing in the city of the northeast of brazil this technology is also being used thank you very much thank you so much for your understanding thanks to all the speakers of civil society can i suggest if you have in uh, more to inform us about please send it to us uh, in writing um, we'll be happy to, uh, really uh, happy and thankful to have it. I now invite the state and give, uh, even though we'll be slightly over time, um, please, you have your 12 minutes for your responses. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. I'm going to start with the reply by the Brazilian state. I would like to first thank the civil society and the commissioners for this talk about a topic which we are still discussing with the new administration of the Brazilian government. So there are some projects that are being developed in relation to this area, and we wanted to show how it has been approached in our reality. We know that the racism that in structure our society also has an impact in technology and that we have to pay a lot of attention in relation to this, how we amplify discriminatory uh, criteria with the use of technology that we include within the Brazilian state. And this is very important when we talk about facial recognition technology. I would like to thank you for your contributions in the civil society. On our side, we commit to enhance that technology and we would like to discuss these um, further with more engagement and participation of the civil society, but we, need, we want to have a technology that we can improve and enhance so that it can comply with this uh, function. And we have sometimes lots of difficulties in terms of using this technology. This is very important to uh, combat human trafficking. This technology is very important to these, but we want this tool to be used 
in the more in the most beneficial way possible and without violating any other rights and this is our challenge today on how to improve the technology the idea is not to replicate the model that is being used in the in other countries and to include it in the brazilian reality on the contrary we want to improve this technology as we learn from the colleagues from the civil society today, we are speaking about a country that is a federal country and several provinces or several states are adopting their own recogni facial recognition technologies. And the national state should have guidelines so that those new uh, technologies can be regul regulated in the states, in the federative states as well. I'm going to give the floor to Marcio and to the other ministries as well. Thank you. I think that Marcio's mic is muted. I don't know if his mic can be enabled, Commissioner Margaret. I cannot do that at all. I I would I could never <laughs> operate that. And I'm not technical in any way. Maybe Elias can unmute. I think that they have uh, technical issues. Uh, issue they cannot open their mic to speak. Sheila, who is the one who would like to speak? Marcio. Marcio Julio da Silva. That one? Yes. And then Elias. Thank you. Time is going. Can Elias speak first? I hope that everybody is listening to me. I am Marcio. I am uh, I, I belong to an area linked to the Ministry of Justice and we articulate with the different states. Brazil is a federation and it's important to say that and the public security regulations depend on the states independently the Ministry of Public Security has several public policies and it's important to speak about facial recognition and the process of innovation and the drive of new technologies in the uh, public security arena. This is something that we have already been talking about, but The innovations on public security are also part of uh, that, that it, this is a topic on which the secretary has already been dealing with and has been willing to discuss with the different states and to talk about uh, features of acquisition, monitoring, training, and developing of capabilities of the different spaces of the state agencies of public security. Speak of technologies as if they, they had agency from the social aspect. Is to talk about the technology with a 
capability that it does not possess. So this is a discussion that we should lead and the secretary has been working with the state on the resources that are uh, um, that are uh, mandatory resources and the secretary would like to um, move forward in the discussion with the different states on this topic. These uh, should be treated with uh, much time because this time require this topic requires time to be dealt with. And now I will pass the floor to Elias from the federal police. Thank you. Hello, once more, once again. When the state was going to participate of this public hearing, the idea was the civil society to um, talk and to speak with clarity, which are the aspects that were being dealt, uh, and the state would do the same. The police try to explain how our processes work and our procedures without the need to to deepen in some topics because we had five minutes but what we do want to do is to be at our at your disposal at the disposal of the civil society and we would like to see what is it that can be improved in the area of public safety security and in the protection of human rights uh, those offenses do exist to human rights they have to be cured rep repaired and what we can do is to try to adapt the technologies so as to so that the work of the police can be made more efficient i will now leave some time to my other colleague yes i'm sorry i i have no more time left so thank you very much uh, for your understanding. I will pass the floor to Yuri. From the Ministry of Racial Equality, we would like to say that we understand that we are a body which articulates public policies and the establishing of national guidelines to recommend the development of those guidelines and to um, safeguard uh, human rights so as to avoid the use of that technological tool as an element of uh, reinforcement of the social profiling. So this is very important. So operative uh, procedures have to be developed on how uh, the use will be done how, when it will be used and other types of definitions. We also have to have judicial protocols for the adoption of special protocols in the uh, jurisdictional area so that people that use those uh, that are subject to the use of this technology And so that independent audits are made and the public proceeding that use this technology as well. 
the debate that was raised here is very important the debate on this on safeguarding the human rights of people especially on the procedure of storage and use of data and also at, uh, of the results obtained in the name of the ministry i would like to reinforce these uh, commitment to work so as to improve and enhance that technology thank you thank, thank you very much could, could, before i close could i just ask you to keep your cameras open so that uh, the um, photo of the session can be taken thank you so Eric, much thank you yes. so much commissioner uh, pessoal se vocês puderem Só olhar um pouquinho para a câmera. Can you look at the cameras? Thank you. Um segundinho mais, por favor. Just one more second. It's two pages. That's why. Really, Sherry? Yeah. It's good. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Obrigado a todo mundo. Thank you very, thank you very much, um, everyone. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that um, we didn't really have enough time. We never seem to have enough time. Can I just say one thing? That from what the state representatives have said, and I thank them for saying this, you would be, you would be open to meet with civil society to have deeper discourses and longer discourses with them. I think that would help enormously. And I hope you could do so and fix the time within the next two months, because when you have a, a time threshold, then you get on with it. So if you could do that, and please, please send us any additional information that both sides could do to, could send to us. We'll be very grateful. And again, thank you so very much everyone for being here and i thank those who are online and who have participated by listening to the entire um, session thank you and all blessings to you bye <laughs>